This video is made for mature audiences. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another um, in the game promo. I hope everyone's had a good day since the last time uh, we put up a promo for y'all to watch. Um, so today we're going to be playing The Painter's Apprentice. This is a platformer game, uh, very reminiscent of um, you know, the old platformers. Um, we play the role of an apprentice as the little guy with the blue hat on the screen there. Um, and you get sucked into the master's world of painting, and it's your job to uh, just get through it and prove yourself to be a master painter. Uh, the designs of the game are all based on actual art styles, so it's like you know, realism, impressionism, etc., etc., etc. So as you play through, um, the platform itself is pretty challenging at times. Uh, a lot of um, pitfalls, precise time jumps, things of that nature. And also your weapon is your paintbrush, which uh, you can use to paint on this and the background, as you'll be able to see when we get in. Now I have played this for a little bit off stream, and uh, it's, an, it's an enjoyable experience. I think you guys will find it enjoyable too, so I'm uh, not going to hesitate. We're going to get right in. Um, you know, and of course, you know, you have options in video, audio, and video. Now, this is controller um, compatible. In fact, I very highly recommend using the controller. As you can see, there's an Xbox layout, and that's the, um, the designer, the developer, designer of the game, um, made it specific for an Xbox controller, but you can set up any control you want to do it. Uh, audios, I, I got the audios pretty muted in the game because the game is kind of loud. So. The video, of course, you know, full screen. Um, I don't know why it's not at 74 hertz, but I'll bump it up to 74. And I don't know why I didn't apply it. Apply it, please. Okay. Level intro and things of that nature. Um, there are extras you can like look up an encyclopedia and the credits. Like, the encyclopedia is about some of the paintings and things you found. So I'll let you guys, if you decide to pick up the game, you can check that out. And we're going to start a brand new game here, even though I did. Um, I, it, this is off of the, technically off of the save file that I've shown before. <laughs> this is off of the saved file that I have, but I'm going to start a new game on that file because I want you guys to experience the game. Uh, you know, from the scratch. So here we go. New game. Train on a string and yes. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna overwrite. Yes, I'm gonna overwrite the safe slide. And a little bit of a story here. Got the items you wanted. Ready to go. Well, since you're not here, maybe I can finally put my skills to the test. What's going on? All, the paint, all this painting's a bust of color. I better fix it before I get back. You won't mind if I use the brush. I wonder how much I paint that doesn't color in. What are you doing? I'm just trying to help. I suppose it was only a matter of time. What's going on? You'll learn soon enough. In you go! Whoa! She pushes him into the painting. So as you can see, our world is very black and white. Um, where, where am I? This looks like the master's paintings. How did I get in here? So it tells you how to jump. So you know, um, if I say to jump, if I say to double jump, your triggers to change the color of the paintbrush, which is very, very appropriate because you're gonna have to, you know, hit stuff. X to attack. And as you'll notice when you're playing the game, as you attack, uh, you paint in the world. This is actually kind of important because there are secrets that will only show up if you paint the world. Now, there might seem, you might be like, well, why would I bother painting the world? Like I said, because there's like, you know, there's stuff that's hidden that you can only see if you, like, you know, throw your paintbrush. 
So like here, they have to do a double jump here. But yeah, you see, like you can, gra you can gradually paint in the world, but of course it tells you here you have to find the key to unlock the level. And you do get points for completing the area. Uh, those little wooden things that pass, those are um, like collapsible platforms. So if you stand on someone, they'll fall from you. And you get stars based on how well you do in the game. So if you don't die, if you kill everything, and if you complete the time and the par time, then you can get up to a gold star. And the stars unlock different things for you, so you can keep retrying it if you want to and perfect the level, or if you want to just keep going, you can continue to go to the next level. Now, you don't die in one hit unless you fall off or something, so you just want to make sure that if you stand up, if you land on spikes, for instance, you want to um, make sure that you jump off of them when you can. Ow. Okay, with the exception of those. Those ones are one hits. <laughs> so, like, you see that platform there? If you stand on it too long, it'll start falling. Now, if you hit something with the wrong color paintbrush, it can do anything. So, you have to match your paintbrush color to match the color of the enemies. Yeah, it's a good idea just to spam the paintbrush as you're running, just to color in everything. And it doesn't matter which color paintbrush you do, as long as you're... Um, see, like right there, you notice how I, I opened up that hidden, that hidden platform by painting world in? What is this, a letter? Dearest Apprentice, no, it's just me. I knew the time would come to tell you my secrets. Knowing our relationship, I'm sure you are very confused. That's an understatement of truth. My letters will follow you on your journey, not only to become a master painter yourself, but master of that magic paintbrush. It's like, magic? So yeah, you see here, you got like platforms. Ah! Yeah, the only problem is if you die, you start over. The nice thing is, uh, anything that you've colored in and any progress that you've made in the game will be saved. So, as you're as you're going along, um, at the very least, you won't have to un you won't have to do everything over again. So I guess my glasses are going off. Yeah, the platforms do come back after a while, so... But you want to collect those paintings on the... On, like those paintings, like I, the one that I just picked up. You actually need to collect those. Those are for bonuses. And it, mainly if you're a completionist, you want to do it. Also, too, there are some platforms that you can't touch unless you color them in. If they're grayed out, you can fall right through them, so you kind of make sure that you... Um, that you color in things as you go. And it's a nice little thing just to kind of like as you're walking around just give you something new. Now these bigger guys take more than one hit, so... Um, yeah, hello? Yellow? Thank you. There we go. So yeah, since I died like three times, I'm only going to get a bronze star. Sorry, my glasses and my headphones are not sitting on my head right today. I don't know why. And the world gets a little bit more complicated as you go. Yeah, I like I like just like walking around and trying to color in everything as I go. <clears throat> This is a very speed runnable game because you can you don't have to kill everything. You don't have to like get the stars, you can just kinda of, like blitz through it. Yeah, you see like right there I can 
you can jump up and like color in the sky. Like sometimes that doesn't do anything for you, but every once in a while you can find stuff just hidden, hidden in the uh, just in the background of the world. So you said, make sure you're just swinging your paintbrush every so often. <laughs> and if you, like I said, if you fall, then, you know, back to start, but... Like I said, the game's forgiving on the, on, on at least saving your progress, so like, you know, all the world that I've colored in. So, you gotta hurry. Ah! All the world I've colored into this point and stuff like that, I don't have to do it anymore. Yeah, and you can jump attack, so remember, just like any platformer that you play, like certain things apply, like you can kind of like jump in midair and attack in midair and stuff like that. So. So the, the layouts do get more complex as you go. Yeah, don't be afraid to see like that platform just kind of appeared after I used my uh, paint there, so. Oh boy. <laughs> so yeah, don't be afraid to like don't be afraid to swing your paintbrush. as much as you want. Yeah, sometimes diving into something's not exactly the best idea, but if you're a completionist, yeah, you're gonna wanna like go in all the nooks and crannies like I'm doing and smack your paint first around. And the music's actually very, very calming. <laughs> it's like a very calm soundtrack. See, like right there, I unlocked the uh, the hidden the hidden thing there. Uh, I got the key here, so I'm gonna go get the key first. Oh, oh, let's go see what this is. Shall we? Ah! There's the painting I wanted. <laughs> and I just and I just like took a nose dive right into right into a pit. Of course. Yeah, the uh, the whole paintbrush thing is a nice little uh, a nice little mechanic in the game because you can, like I say, you can unlock stuff just by just like that, just by swinging your paintbrush around. You can unlock hidden things, so it'll you can navigate the map completely different because of it. But sometimes you don't even need to go where you think you need to go. All you gotta do is just like go splash a color in the world. Now, you see this guy here, the one that's changing colors? If you don't have a color that matches him, you have to try to mix the color that, um, 
you have to use the color that's in between. So if he like turns green, if you hit him with um, yellow or blue, it'll reset him. Or you can just wait until he turns the color that you that you have. You don't. All, you only get the primary colors: red, yellow, and blue. By the way, yeah. the green, orange, or purple. You never get those. But you can use the primary colors to hit something and still affect them. As long as you're using the right primary color. And you can see some of these levels can be kind of long. They're not overly hard, though. And always remember to start off, you know, at your... Oops. You see, like, if I hit him with the wrong color there, he just kind of, like, changes colors. So the nice thing is right there, because he was orange, I hit him with the, uh, the yellow. And he changed yellow afterwards because that was the color, and it still scored a, a damage hit, even though I didn't hit him with the, the correct color, because the um, the primary color matched one of his uh, secondary colors. So yeah, this is basic color theory, guys. So maybe if you've um, ever taken like a little painting class before or something like that, this is gonna make you remember all your your like elementary school uh, color art classes and that right there is a checkpoint so if you hit that that means you don't have to go all the way back to the beginning which is very useful so, like dude right here he just turned yellow I can just smack him directly but... now also too just like uh, everything else has a color to it switches have a color to them so like this switch here for instance you have to hit it with red to activate the the motor there, or you know whatever it is that's controlling this thing. There's a lot of platforms and like switches and things in the game that are based on color. So see that right there. Oh, I missed. Yeah, think of it like a sword. It's gonna fall. I gotta wait for it. Yeah, just think of the paintbrush like a glorified sword. You know, just ah! Oh, I almost, almost got right there. Now the thing, same thing applies to this guy here. If you hit him with the wrong color, he'll explode, and the explosion can actually knock you out. So you want to make sure that um, you don't hit him with the wrong color. You can hit him with the a, match, a primary color matches the secondary color, but if you hit him with the wrong color, he'll blow up in your face like a grenade. And you, know, you see that one's got multiple switches, so and a lot of little beasties with secondary colors, so we're gonna be doing a lot of like um, we're gonna be doing a lot of coloring work just to match up everything. So we need blue. And if we hit it again, it turns it off. Just FYI. Ow! Yeah, the saw blade is just like any saw blade in any other game. If you hit it, it's damage. So don't get hit by the saw blade. And the hearts, you know, obviously they refill you. You took damage, so get the hearts whenever you can. Oh boy, am I gonna miss that? Ah! Good thing there was nothing. Good thing there was a platform underneath. Thankfully, for a platformer, this game can be. Did I accidentally hit that? Yeah, I did. There is a little bit of a hitbox behind the uh, character. So that little bit of like uh, that paint that's, like starts behind them, that can actually hit stuff. So you want to be careful, especially if you have a switch that you're trying to hit.
Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little bit of like ridiculous platforming in this game that tests you a little bit. Oops. Put them with the wrong color. Another silver star. And you do get tougher. You do get tougher monsters too. Like there's some specialty ones that show up. By the way, I forgot. Apologize about the snack, but I didn't eat before the stream. I didn't. I um. I forgot to eat a snack before the stream, so. And so people. Watch on YouTube and Facebook while you get Why is he eating? I assure you, it's not it's not to make you hungry. Although if anybody's wondering, I'm eating some food. I got yeah, okay, food. <laughs> not sponsored. It just happens to be something I can chew on. Ah! See what I mean about hitting them with the wrong color? I'm just trying to color in the world. Okay, here's a tricky one. Called my death there. Ah! Pay attention to the spikes and ran right into them. Lucky like dummy. Geez, I'm just not I'm just not paying attention now. Front star, lovely. I think I've gold starred a couple of them, but <laughs> oh look, we got platforms.
Okay, tricky platform time. Ooh, one, two, three, four. Painting! And that one, when you, as soon as we colored it in, it took off because it got colored to it, so... Sometimes it's all it takes. There's color in the world. Next level, and look, we got something right in front of us, so. Coloring the world, coloring the world, coloring, coloring, coloring the world. Now, I said, if you're the type of person that likes games like this, it's got like a, you know, kind of like a nice little. Kind of like a nice little cute art style, a little bit of a, uh. Um, oh! God, I gotta, I gotta work on the platform. Alright, these platforms are like not synced together. Yeah, if you like the art style and you just like that kind of cool, cool, um, calming music in the background where it's like not, not too crazy. Let's say the platforming itself isn't that rough, so it's like, you know, it's, a, it's a pretty easy game to get into. This is not very much not a stressful game. Oh. Like I said, there, it does have its challenge to it because there's a platformer, but it's not like it's not like it's gonna kick your butt Ooh. too badly. It's almost a relaxing platformer if that makes any sense. Because I'm, I'm used to platformers that definitely have a, a lot more of an intensity to them. This is not very intense in comparison. Yeah. I missed the one. It doesn't matter. Oh no, you didn't complete any challenges. Yeah, I just possibly get no stars because you didn't do everything. All right, and we have a boss. Of course, we have a boss. Holy crap! What the heck is that? It looks different from all the other blobs I fought. Those arms are dangerous. So it looks like they can whip at me real fast. I got this, I think. The Lasher. By the way, make sure you color in the world, like I'm doing now. Ow. I forget how to fight this thing. <laughs> it's gonna take me a few tries to remember how to do this. <laughs>
And you can get one of three things. You get a health boost, a paint boost, and a damage boost. When you kill certain bosses. And then you get the key automatically. So you can see it's a different kind of, kind of world here. A little bit more like a Bob Ross type thing now. It changes the art style in the background. So like the first one was supposed to be more of a realism. This is more like a, it's supposed to be like impressionism. So you're gonna see a slightly different art style in the background of all this stuff. Oh, hooray, another letter from the master. <laughs> you made it this far, so you should get the hang of the paintbrush. Yeah, no thanks for you. <laughs> With each passing moment, the magic I had passes to you. You grow stronger, even gain new abilities. I, on the other hand, will grow weaker. I gained this magic 30 years ago from a young woman who I rescued near a lake. She was passed up from hunger. I only had a piece of bread on me with something that thought her compelled me to share. The most beautiful person I've ever seen. The skin is white as snow and hair is black as coal. To repay me for the kindness, she asked me what my greatest wish was. Thinking it was a joke, I told her I wished to be able to create tire rolls with the stroke of my brush. At a dinner, she conjured up this marvelous golden brush. She warned me that taking it would change my life. I hate these cliffhanger endings. I wonder what he means by new abilities. Hmm. Yep. Ow. So you see this dude here? It says hit Y for the paintball. What it does, it stuns him and you can walk up and smack him around a little bit. It's going to be very important because uh, you only get a couple of paintballs each uh, area. So you have to make sure that um, you take your shots. Thankfully, like any game that has an ammunition based item, even something like a paintball, um, you can you can find refills for it, and then it tells you how to target. So if you hit the left button there, to see how it like, targets something. So like targeting dude here, you can use the targeting to hit him with the paintball. And make it a little bit easier for us to take them out. I can't remember. I think, yeah, I gotta go around to get up there. I forgot. If I remember right, there's something I want up here. Oh, of course. Let's go. Yeah, it, the one, one of the little quirks about this game is if you're standing too close to something. Yeah, there's, okay, there's nothing up there. I thought there might have been something up there, but yeah. if you stand in too close to certain parts of the platforms, like if you get hung up on, underneath them, you can't jump. It's a little annoying. I think it's just a slight defect in the way they've created the platforms. But it's not, like, horrible to get used to. Oh, crud. Yeah, wrong color. And that's what happens when you use the wrong color. Wrong color of paintball. Nothing happens. <laughs> Ah! 
I set off a grenade. <laughs> I set off the grenade blob. Instant death. Alright, so now this one here. You'll notice that this uh, platform kind of goes the other way. I hope I hit the switch the right way, otherwise I'm going to be going backwards. So now these guys here are another thing. These guys are pretty strong too. They have a club on them. So unless you're really quick, you just want to do that. And paintball him to stun him. The nice thing about this particular game, this is, even though you're hitting something, attacking something, it's a very family friendly platformer because there's no blood, guts, and gore involved. It's paint. So, this is, a type of, this is the type of game you can give your kid to play because it's like very, very not. Very, even though there's like, there's like a level of inherent violence involved because you're hitting something with a paintbrush, it's like, it's not like, because you're inside of a painting and you're not actually like physically injuring something, it's just more like you're just playing the platformer. There's not like the, the whole concept of this being, you know, too violent for a kid or something isn't exactly the same. Like I said, I could, I could, I could give this, I could um, be comfortable giving this to the kid to play. And like I said, though, it's still got enough of a challenge. Yet. You know, so it is a platformer, so it does, it is challenging. So, oh, check that out. Hidden saw blade. Crouching tiger, hidden saw blade. Ow. <laughs> Swamp. <laughs> I just got thwomped. This game's version of a thwomp, anyway. But like I said, remember what I said about the refills? That's a refill for the, uh, the, paint, the paint balls. Oh look, there's platforms up there. I'm gonna go hit this uh, save point. Clear out these guys while I'm at it. Alright. There's gotta be something up there because I've got like the gray area. So. Let's go see what the gray area is all about, shall we? And the, your character only has one speed, that's the, the run that you see here, but it's actually pretty balanced between a walk and a run, and you can always stutter stuff. Oh look, a painting! Whee! certain sense of satisfaction about coloring in the world as you go. I don't know. It could just be like, you know, the, the latent, uh, you know, the latent kid in me because, you know, when you had a coloring book or something, you could like, you know, paint by, you know, those old paint by number books, those little coloring books that they used to have. Like, there's a certain sense of satisfaction of just like painting the world and coloring it. I'll be wrapped up here in a little bit on this particular section of the stream anyway, guys. I've, I'm already a little bit over half an hour. But... Look, 
we got like a hidden platform again. Oh! That might be one of the few things about this game that bothers me is the uh, the the edging on this on the platforms. And it's a combination of um oh that's the door, but I don't want to go there yet. It's a combination of um you're gonna get smacked in. I thought I hit you. And then you fall right through it like it's not there. That might be the only thing that's a bit frustrating about this game. Is the, the platform is a little on the awkward side. I said, uh, as far as yo, Calvin, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> yeah, a little bit of Bob Ross, huh? Um, but yeah, so guys, the Painter's Apprentice. Um, like I said, it's it's very controlled. I, I now I have played this with the mouse and keyboard. Uh, with the keyboard, I'm not gonna recommend keyboard. Uh, definitely plug in a controller. Grab your PS4 controller. Grab your Xbox controller. Buy you no, know, buy a generic Logitech controller. Whatever. Um, but make sure you have a controller for this game. You'll get infinitely more um, enjoyability out of it. Um, it's a simple 2D platformer. I said I like the art style. The music's very calming. I said it's appropriate for all, all ages. A lot of times, you know, I grew up playing the violent platformers, you know, just, you know, shooting blood splatters and stuff like that, so it doesn't bother me, but I know some people like, I don't want the kids to play this, or, you know, I want something that's lighthearted. This is a lighthearted, you know, thing. It's paint watch. Um, there's no permadeath, like, you don't have to start over from the beginning of a whole stretch. It's, the game saves, so I could go back and pick up right there, or I could level select if I want to. And go back to any world I want. And, you know, try to get a gold star. Very speed runnable game. Um, as long as you can figure out, you know, where the the key is, you don't have to kill anything. You can just run right through the level and exit. So it's definitely a little bit of everything for everybody. The, the only things that are awkward, if you stand too close to the platform, you can't jump through it because for some reason they have like a pixel or something that hangs out just a little bit, like kind of like that, where you you're hitting the edge even though the edge isn't there. Also, too, sometimes if you're standing on the edge of the platform, you fall through it. So again, there's a little bit of an issue with the edges of things. Um, um, the one thing that is a little bit awkward is when you're running and swinging the paintbrush at the same time. You slide a little bit, which can be a little frustrating because you can hit something that you don't want to. The double jumping... Again, jumping is a little... The jumping is okay, but when you double jump, you kind of float a little bit. If you're not used to games that have double jump like that, it might be a little weird. Um, now, the game was released in 2018, so it's not a new game. However, if you do want to go pick it up on Steam, uh, it is $9.99. Um, the game does have more to it. There's a few more worlds that it get progressively more difficult, I guess it is. Replayability for people who are achievement hunters. There's a uh, replayability for secret hunters. Like if you want to like poke everywhere and find everything if you're a completionist. Um, replayability if you're a speedrunner. So this game is appealing to a broad range of audiences, which is a very good thing. So 
I definitely do recommend it. Uh, like I said, it's an easy game to pick up. You can play one level, a couple minutes. Um, it'll, like I said, it'll tickle your fancy too because the whole concept of painting in the world to uncover things is a nice, you know, it's, it's a nice mechanic. It's different from a lot of other things where you have to like constantly hit switches or like, you know, bomb walls or do other things and stuff. This is just swing your paintbrush around everywhere until you find the platform. <laughs> Although, to some people, it might be off-putting because that means you literally have to swing your paintbrush everywhere if they find the platform. Um, but yeah, guys. Um, Information is going to be in the box below for everybody on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, later on, who's going to be watching the video. Everybody in Twitch hanging out. We're going to do some other stuff, as always. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.